Here I have an interesting revolver that I recently acquired, a French Model 1892. It's a six-shot solid frame revolver that was introduced in 1892, originally intended as a sidearm for commissioned officers. It served in that role during World War I, and it wasn't replaced until the French adoption of semi-automatic pistols in 1935, though these did see service in World War II as well. At time of adoption in the late 19th century, non-commissioned officers were still issued the revolver that this replaced, the Model 1873, and during World War I they used the Spanish-made ruby pistols. Now you may see these referred to as the LaBelle revolver, but that's not an accurate name as Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas LaBelle had nothing to do with its development. And that's not the only connection to the LaBelle rifle. These fired an 8mm round, again referred to as LaBelle, but in actuality it's 8mm French Ordnance, in metric 8x27R. I think that that's so they could share the same barrel making equipment as their LaBelle rifle. A number of other countries did the same in the same era, namely Austria with their 8mm Mondlickers and Rostengasse revolvers, and Russia with their 7.62 Mosin Nagants and Nagant revolvers, more on those later. But a small bore straight walled revolver cartridge is rather weak and underpowered. There is some thought with those other countries that follow up shots are important. Austria went with 8 shots in their revolvers, and Russia 7, but this French 1892 only has 6. Other countries during the same era went a different route, namely the British and the US, which used large bore revolvers, with 455 in the Webleys in England and 45 in Colts and Smith and Wessons in the US, all of which fired six shots. The US's experiment with small bore revolvers and 38 long Colt in 1892 was later considered a failure as they went back to 45 caliber. Let's take a look at how this French Model 1892 works. It's a double action revolver, meaning that the hammer can be cocked manually and then fired in single action, or the trigger can be pulled, cocking the hammer and firing the gun in double action. On the right side of the revolver is a gate, which is folded back, allowing rounds to be inserted one at a time. The gate being open disconnects the hammer from the trigger, so each time the trigger is pulled, the cylinder rotates, which is a feature borrowed from the Portuguese Abadie. Or the gate being back allows the cylinder to swing out to the right hand side, giving easier access to load rounds one at a time. The French did later use speed loaders, allowing multiple rounds to be loaded at one time, but I haven't been able to come across one. When all rounds are fired and the cylinder is swung out, the spent casings can be ejected all at the same time with the spring-loaded plunger. For disassembly, there's a screw on the right-hand side of the frame above the grip. It's captive to the right side of the frame, so as it's unscrewed, it opens up the left side plate. And once free, you can rotate it over and see the inner workings of the revolver. The grip panel comes off like so. Inside, the parts are numbered in disassembly order, starting with the mainspring. One thing to note is the cam on the gate access pin which is out of the way when the gate is up. But when the gate is down, it pushes the hammer strut back and out of the way of the trigger, disconnecting it.
As a comparison, here's a revolver of the same era that is a bit more common on the collector's market today. This is a Russian Model 1895 Nagant revolver. It's famous for its gas seal. The cylinder moves forward, creating a seal between the cylinder and the barrel. The French 1892 doesn't have that feature, but in a way it's the much more advanced design. They both have a loading gate. The Nagant folds down to the side and allows for loading one at a time. But each casing is also ejected one at a time. And the cylinder has to be manually indexed for each, making it a very slow process to reload. The French 1892, with its swing out cylinder and simultaneous eject, speeds up the process considerably. If you watch any other videos on the French 1892, all of them mention how it's weird that the cylinder swings out to the right hand side. They explain it so the revolver can be transferred to the left hand and loading can be done with the dominant right hand. But they're comparing it to modern day revolvers, which all have the cylinder swing out to the left. What the French had for a basis of comparison at the time were gate loaders. The older model 1873 had a gate on the right very similar to the gate on this 1892. But that revolver was single load and single eject, just like the Nagant I showed earlier. And in order to manipulate that, the user had the revolver in the left hand, loading it with the right. I found a translation of an old French manual showing the use of the 1892 revolver. To load, place the revolver in the left hand, raise the barrel toward the horizon, pull the loading gate back with the left thumb, then using two fingers, open the cylinder to the right, then with the right hand, place the cartridges in the chambers of the cylinder, close the cylinder by swinging it to the left, making sure it latches, and then close the loading gate with the left thumb. If you want the weapon to be on safe, then open the loading gate. That last part is interesting. Like most revolvers, there's no external safety. I imagine they weren't keeping the gate open during combat since a round could slip out of the exposed chamber easily. Back to the manual, to unload, place the revolver in the left hand, pull back the loading gate with the left thumb, then using two fingers, open the cylinder to the right. Then with the left pinky hand, Press the extractor and eject the cartridges into the right hand. And that last part is interesting as well. I'm not exactly sure what the context is, but I suspect this manual is covering training or range use. They probably weren't reloading the spent cases, but maybe they were collecting them for scrap. This revolver is a great piece of history, serving upwards of 50 years in the French army and took part in two world wars. They were produced for over 30 years, from 1892 up till 1924, though they didn't start in earnest until the Bell rifle production slowed down in the mid-1890s. They ended up making over 300,000 total. This one is actually a late model, made in 1921, and thus it's relatively affordable at around $500. Antique models? Those being made prior to 1899 fetch quite a bit more on the market. I've seen them sell for two or three times higher. And I can't close out on this video without pointing out what drew me to this revolver in the first place, and that is the look of it. These are beautiful pieces, and I just love the contrast between the deep bluing and the color hardened trigger, gate, and hammer. Though this one is worn, it still retains that contrast. And with that, thanks for watching.